How's it going guys? My name is Zach with the Movie Castle and today we're going to be taking a look at Bloody Murder. This is from the year 2000, directed by Ralphie Portillo, stars Jessica Morris, Patrick Cavanaugh, and Peter Guillemette. And this is a knockoff of the Friday the 13th series. I do have this in this eight movie collection, so we're going to have to push this a little closer to the camera in order to see, but it has Bloody Murder 1 and 2, and we can see he has the hockey mask, like Friday the 13th. He also has Jason uh, Leatherface's chainsaw, and we get the eyes from the Scream poster. Also in part two, the I Know What You Did Last Summer, Fisherman's Hook. So yeah, it's a mockbuster. It's trying to be like other slashers, but overall I don't mind. Mockbusters, trend chasing, a lot of this happens in horror, you know. You had Halloween, now you get a wave of 80 slashers. You had Paranormal Activity, now you get a wave of found footage. Everybody wants to follow the fire and chase the trends. That's okay. And you have, like, Mockbusters. Uh, think the Asylum. Everyone had Paranormal Activity, but if you were a weird little nerdy whore geek, you also had Paranormal Entity, and it was almost like this secret bonus film that not everybody else got to see. And I think that is where Mockbusters kind of shine. It's like, hey, you like this property, what if you got a whole nother movie that was kind of like it? Sure, it's not going to be as good, it's going to have a lot less production value, but it might be a little cheesy and fun as well. So that was always kind of the appeal of knockoffs and mockbusters. It's like, hey, let's go for a whole nother movie. Why not? I, I want more. I'm a horror movie uh, geek, and I want to just watch more of them. So knowing going in that it was a Friday the 13th knockoff, it didn't turn me off. But then seeing the movie did. And I guess I should say... I'm not a comedy teardown channel. I don't go into these things trying to just bash on low-budget movies. I try to do fair and honest reviews. But that being said, this is very bad. This is a pretty bad horror movie. And there's a few things, you know. The directing is pretty straightforward. Plop the camera down, point it at the subjects, press the little button, and you're good. Nothing too spectacular here, and you do get some bad shots of, like, repetitive pans in the forest, just panning back and forth, following characters walking or running through the woods. It can get a little boring. So the directing's not spectacular, neither is the acting. Pretty wooden with awkward pauses. Not quite Rod from Birdemic, but we're getting there. Very, very stiff. So the bad acting, bad directing, that's not good. But that's not even what kills the movie. This movie is killed by two fatal flaws. Uh, one, it has a confusing mess of a plot. They try to do this thing where there's Trevor Morehouse, the killer, you know, um, he's a, a legend. He might not even be real. Okay, that's good. But then they also try to do Nelson. Who the heck is Nelson? Uh, he's a, maybe a camper that got killed by a mistake back when the kid's parents were the counselors? Yeah, I don't know. Nelson's someone that's talked about a whole lot before he's ever really explained. And then you also get Jason, who is one of the counselors that they suspect did it. So it's... Okay, you're trying to go for a mystery, but you just start talking super flippantly between Morehouse, Nelson, and Jason, and it doesn't help that that uh, Nelson has a very similar origin story to Friday the 13th Jason, and then there's a Jason here, and it just gets to be this confusing mess, and I get it's supposed to be a mystery, but when you don't lay out the plot well enough, we're not gonna follow it, and it just turns into who's Nelson, what's going on here? 
is Trevor Morehouse a thing? Like, I, I don't... You can follow it, but you have to kind of take notes. And no, nah, it, it's not told very well. And maybe you could do this. Maybe you could do more of a mystery slasher. I mean, it's been done before. It's just not told well here. So that kills the movie. Another thing that kills the movie is it's so watered down. And I mean, like, flip it to the back. This somehow got an R rating. I honestly can't tell you how. It feels super PG-13. Like, we get the famous, you know, camera runs at someone, he turns and he screams and then a cut. That's lame. I hate that when slasher movies do it. We get, you know, kills that are off screen. That's not good. To the point where if someone dies and there's a little bit of blood, it's like one of the movie's highlights, you know? There's a few kills with a tiny bit of special effects or a tiny bit of a gag behind them. It is nowhere near Tom Savini. But when you get a kill and you actually get a little bit of blood in this movie, it's like, whoa, hey, there's a tiny bit of effort. And it's the same, you know, it's rated R just for violence. So, you know, you'll get scenes where characters go to make out in their underwear and you're going to get that uh, shower scene where we pan down and focus on the character's foot. It's, you know, horror movies why being rated R is so important is it establishes we break the rules. Nothing's off the table. Anything can happen. There's danger here. And that's why a lot of PG-13 horror movies don't work. When we see shots like this, we know we're in a safe, controlled, sterile space. And this movie really does feel sterile. It, you know, it's like, it's like food. When you eat food, you want good, well-cooked food with lots of spices and flavors. But then you also have food like, you know, fast food or frozen dinners and it tastes like cardboard. This is the movie equivalent of food that tastes like cardboard. And overall, it does feel super soulless. And, you know, I feel bad saying that and I know that a low budget can choke out some of, you know, what the actors and directors want to do. You don't have as much budget, you don't have as much time, the product will probably suffer. We've seen good directors pull past a low budget, you know, Sam Raimi and Evil Dead and whatnot, but there's a lot of low budget films that when they're not given the opportunity to grow, it seems like they don't even try to work around it, and this is one of them, and it just feels sanitized and slowless, uh, soulless, and combine that with the bad acting, it's just, a. Uh, it's really flat. Uh, let's, let's talk a bit about the plot. I'm not going to do any major spoilers, but I do want to take a moment to analyze a few elements here. Uh, again, no significant spoilers, but, but let's dig in a little bit. Uh, we open up with the campers, and they're doing that thing like Friday the 13th Part 1, where they're coming down to set up the camp early. The, the thing with setting up the camp early is they can't really think of enough things for them to do. At one point, they're painting the cabins, but at another point, they're setting the canoes in the water, because you just leave the canoes in the water all summer long, right? They're not off to the side, you're just gonna put them in the water. And there's also this really funny bit where they can't think of stuff for them to do, so they're just constantly looking for this uh, camper list, you know? It's like, what should they be doing? Uh, they're looking for the camper list. It's not good. In Friday the 13th, you saw them rebuilding the camp. That was cool. Uh, they also tell us everybody's name. This is so-and-so, 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 and Jason. And they do that like two or three times, and it's almost like this weird little magic trick that even though they tell us all the characters' names at least twice, don't remember anybody but Jason. <laughs> anyway, there's also little dramas amongst them. You know, so-and-so is dating so-and-so when they were dating someone before. And because this is told primarily through dialogue, it's not super interesting. 
you know, like, oh, that character is kissing this other character. If I remember this bit of previously established expository dialogue, that contradicts their cheating. It's not told the best, and you have to kind of pay attention and try to remember who's supposed to be with who. And then there's also this rivalry between two of the characters. They were best friends, and then they were in a track and field meet, and one of them twisted the ankle when racing against the other. Now they're bitter enemies. Because you twisted your ankle in track and field? Like, they never said he stuck his foot out and tripped him. If you're in your own lane just running, how is that your friend's fault? Because he was in the race with you? Like, it is so weird to blame falling and twisting your ankle on the other guy you happen to be racing against. But now they're bitter enemies, okay? It is super weird. But anyway, people eventually start to get picked off and go missing. And we get that Morehouse, Nelson, Jason mess that I talked about earlier. And yeah, the ki uh, one of the first kids to get disappeared is named Jason. So in turn, everybody thinks it might be Jason. And we get all these gags. <laughs> sure, Jason's out there somewhere. Jason will show up when you least expect it. It is shocking how this joke never lands. I'm actually surprised. You think it would land once, but no, and they do it all the time. So it's trying to be meta. You get some guy in here and he's trying to do that scream thing, you know, like Jamie Kennedy. And he's like, oh, no, I'm at a I'm at a, uh, a camp and Jason's in the woods. It, it had to be Jason, right? Yeah, at least they're knocking off more than just Friday the 13th. But boy, when they try to be scream, it doesn't work either, you know? Uh, so there's this mystery. And, you know, as I said earlier, it's convoluted. I won't spoil too much of the ending, but it gets even more convoluted at the end because they try to sell you on this red herring, and it's clearly not this red herring character because even though we don't see much of the killer, we see enough to know it's not this person, and they do a bunch of liar shots, basically. They flash back and show what-ifs with this person, and we're like, no, that's that's not what we saw earlier. But after they do this red herring, the killer tries to kill someone else, and they show it as this person doing it. But then, then later, it's revealed that it's not. So that shot was a liar shot showing something that didn't happen, but we thought might have happened based on our suspicions. And then it shows that this killer is someone else. And it's not really that great of a twist compared to what you put us through to get there with a whole bunch of shots that weren't even true. And it's just so, so terribly, terribly messy. It's just really bad. So yeah, as I said earlier, convoluted plot PG-13 feeling that somehow got an R rating, wooden acting, and bad directing, and yeah, it's the cardboard food of movies. It's just, it's almost surreal watching it and seeing just a movie that has so little behind it. It feels like a fake movie that someone would be watching in a movie, and that is... It, it's so weird, and like I don't like to gripe on things, but yeah, this one turned out pretty bad, and I'd want to say something nice, but the the only things I can think of is like, it's all shot legibly, where we can see the characters in the frame, but that's not, that's not anything. I, the only positive I can say is if you guys like to get together for a bad movie and take a minute to riff on something... You can do that with this movie, and here's hoping that Rift Tracks gets a hold of it, but there's not much redeeming to this. It's just a, a flat, soulless movie that got cranked out and dumped, but it looks like Friday the 13th, so we'll watch it, right? 
apparently enough people did where it got a sequel. And from what I gather, the sequel is a little bit better. I'm sure I'll watch it eventually, but as it stands now, really not a great movie. Again, if you like riffing on movies, there might be something there, but it's not good. Anyway, to everyone who's watched so far, thank you for watching. To everyone who's liked and subscribed, thank you. You really are helping the channel out. I'll leave a relevant playlist on the bottom. This should be my slasher movies playlist where I've talked about uh, over a hundred things. There's over a hundred videos in this playlist, and that does include real Friday the 13th movies. Anyway, have a good day. I'll see you guys again very, very soon. Slasher movies playlist on the bottom. Have a good day now.